the wonderfully chaotic Red River rivalry. I mentioned the temperatures dropped. It was a picturesque morning in Fair Park, if you could get there, for number 12 Oklahoma, number 3 Texas. This was a back-and-forth game all morning long. Uh, really didn't have a great sense of which team was going to pull it out at the last. Texas takes a, a three-point lead with just a little over a minute to go, and Dylan Gabriel ultimately answers the bell, a 34-30 win to knock off the Texas Longhorns. Um, I noted that this was a beautiful game for all involved, except, Trey, those of us that had the under. We We made it until well, what we made it, I guess, 59 minutes and 45 seconds. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, 15 seconds left in the game. Cash is the over with 15 seconds left. That was overwhelming. Uh, as we were making jokes then to laugh off the pain, these boys signed up for 60 and, uh, and OU delivers for all over betters involved. Uh, Dylan Gabriel had a very, very solid game. Garrett, as you look at what Gabriel was able to do, you talked about him being the better quarterback heading into this matchup. He certainly was today. With Oklahoma's victory in mind, are the Sooners the unquestioned favorite in the Big 12, or do we just re-rack and do this again in December in the Big 12 championship game? I think at this point you have to say that they're the favorite. You, you've seen this team beat Texas, right? I think at this point – it's Oklahoma and it's Texas, and then it's a massive gap between the rest of them. But, you know, at this point, I have to think you say that you say, you know, Oklahoma played Texas already. They showed that in certain situations, they're able to play good defense. Uh, obviously, this is back and forth. Obviously, you know, your under didn't hit. But at the same time, you know, they, they, they came down the field. They stormed down. They won at the last second. They used, you know, a, a complete game. And I think that Dylan Gabriel established himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the game right now. Look, we, we've seen him light it up. We've seen him put up big numbers, but we asked what happens when he plays a real defense. Well, what happens when he plays a real defense is he doesn't just throw the ball effectively. He ran for whatever he wanted to. I believe he led the team in rushing stats as well. So, you know, shout out to him. Um, not just, you know, being effective in the pocket, but also doing a really, really good job as a runner doing what he needed to do to get his team down the field. He was the best player on the field today, and and Oklahoma was the best team on the field. And I think that means that when these teams meet again in December, as we think that they will, you have to lean Oklahoma because they've already shown that they can do it. I'm really curious to see if Texas, how Texas bounces back because I I've been telling you all season long, Texas is for real, Texas is legitimate, Personally, I don't believe that this loss uh, takes away from Texas being a good football team, even a college football playoff contender. I do think it shows you it is nearly impossible to go 12-0, and and when you have uh, weaknesses, when you don't tackle well, when your secondary is missing a guy like Ryan Watts, when your quarterback throws two interceptions in the ballgame, it's really hard to win. And Texas made enough mistakes – today that the Sooners ultimately capitalized on to lose a rivalry game. Now, Trey, I'll, I'll turn this around to you. You were ready to buy in. You were ready to hop on board the bandwagon, crown Texas as a legitimate playoff contender. What does this mean for Texas? Does this end their season? Does this potentially keep them on the outside looking in, even if they do run the table? What makes sense of this for the Longhorns? If they can run the table and beat OU and avenge this loss, no, it probably won't keep them out unless there's somehow four undefeated teams around the country ahead of them, which almost never happens. So, no, I don't think that they'd be left out if they somehow ran the table. But what this means is Texas kind of lost their margin for error, right? I, I think they, they completely lost their margin of error. They can't have the uh-oh game that we've seen them have in the Big 12 in the past. Uh, and they can't let Oklahoma beat them twice because if they let the, this carry over into their next game, if they let have a hangover, if they slip up again, maybe in, uh, when they play Kansas State or Texas Tech or someone else on the schedule, then they truly are out of playoff contention. And we're right back where we started questioning if Sark can get it done when it counts and win the conference. So I, I've been hesitant to buy in 
because I just want to see consistency from Quinn Ewers. And even when everyone was ready to crown Texas, even when they beat Alabama, even when, you know, they relatively – they did really well against some other teams on their schedule. One, they had played some backup quarterbacks and an unproven Jalen Milrow. And two, they had had some slow starts. They had been sluggish on offense, and they hadn't looked great uh, for 60 minutes yet in a, in a uh, game. So, I don't know. Like – it's something that, you know, third play of the game, you see Quinn Ewers throw a really bad interception. He has three total turnovers on the day. And I think you have, it's fair to question outside of the Alabama game. Are these moments just too big for him? Are these moments too big for Quinn Ewers? And can he be the one to lead Texas back to the promised land? I think it's fair to question because it certainly looked like, you know, he got outplayed by Dylan Gabriel today. The loss certainly wasn't all on him. The defense, uh, didn't look as good as it had against other opponents, but you know, it starts at the top. And Quinn Ewers, when you turn the ball over three times and give it to Oklahoma, it deep in your own territory a couple times, that's not going to be a good recipe for success. That's the glaring, that's the glaring stat when you when you look at this. If you're on the the YouTube side of things, we've got the the game stats pulled up right now. Across the board, it's fairly even, right? Total yards, not a huge disparity. Rushing yards. Not a, not a huge disparity. Passing yards, uh, Texas passed for almost 100 more yards than Oklahoma did. But the three turnovers, that's the difference in the ball game to me. Uh, Texas uh, not able... In the goal line to, stand. Which, and, and, you know, and if you want to talk about stand. the other knock on Texas, it's been the toughness, right? It's uh, going back to Charlie Strong putting the T back in Texas, if you want to go all the way back there. But th- that you, you don't win a game if you get shut out on the goal line when you get four carries at the one. Well, and Texas got stopped twice, uh, twice on the goal line, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, to not to not punch it in, to not have kind of that statement moment that I think the Longhorns were looking for in a rivalry game, certainly going to leave a bitter taste in their mouths, right? I mean, Matthew McConaughey's on game day saying, hey, I watched the sunrise, there's some there's some crimson in there, but then it burns off and it's all burnt orange. That's all great. That's all great. Having a minister of culture is awesome. Cool for the recruiting. But until Texas can nail down these big time moments, they're just going to be so many questions that surround their legitimacy. And now getting ready to head in the SEC, this becomes, you know, for better or worse, a, a, a week in and week out grind, right? And listen, I know the SEC is is a little down this year. I think I think you have a lot of good teams. I think you might only have one, maybe two great teams. But this is this is Texas's chance to make a statement. And there's no doubt that they slipped up today. Trey, as you mentioned, no margin for error. I still believe that Texas is a good team, that they can get this done, but they absolutely have to win out. An impressive win over Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game, depending on how things shake out. I think Texas is in as that three or four seed. But boy, the Longhorns thought they had this in the bag. They they thought going into this game, maybe it was because of, of last year, maybe it was because of the confidence of beating Alabama. They thought that this Red River rivalry game was theirs to lose. And Oklahoma, credit to them, stepped up conquered the demons from last year a historic shellacking from a season ago and dylan gabriel delivers a statement victory a major win for brent venables who you know i guess last thing on this like brent venables doesn't get enough credit right six and seven everybody is out on him we we were certainly going oh boy i don't know if this is going to work out for the sooners extremely critical of the ted roof hire i will raise my hand on that and they put all of that aside to get a rivalry win today. It's fascinating to see where these two teams go from here. Oklahoma certainly has an easier schedule, uh, although uh, maybe Bedlam got a little bit more interesting with Oklahoma State's victory. Uh, Texas still has a couple of, of challenges waiting for them on their schedule. Gracious, how about that? 